Okay, so here's a quick overview of your introduction section for your research project. So, the firstly, what is the purpose of an introduction? Well, the introduction is to provide your reader with a lead into the study. So, imagine that your reader has never uh, come across or read anything about your topic before, so they need to be educated as to the ins and outs of your topic. So, you really need to explain why you're doing the project. And we use this word rationale. And rationale is used to describe the purpose or the reason for doing it. So you've really got to sell the reader the idea of doing your research project. You also need to explain what literature exists already. So what's been done before on your topic, and therefore, what do you want to find out? What's new and interesting about your study? Okay, so we've talked a lot about this idea of a funnel. So the first part of your introduction should start very broad. So the idea is we talk about articles that perhaps aren't hugely relevant to your study, but just set the scene. So they're quite basic, they're quite simple, but they just allow the reader an introduction into the topic. As we move through the introduction and as we work our way through the paragraphs, we become more specific. And as we become more specific, at the bottom of our funnel, right at the end, pops out our question. And our question is what we need to be able to move forward. So it's this process of moving from broad to specific that we need to cover as we work through our introduction. Okay, so how do we start broad? Well, we start by just introducing the topic. So for example, if your topic is about a particular sport, you might discuss about that. If it's about a particular concept, like psychology or physiology, you might start with that. Um, what's a really nice way of starting a research project introduction is maybe to use some news articles or real-life scenarios to sort of kick the situation off. So for example here, if you wanted to talk about the psychological effects of penalty shootouts, you might start with a news article about a famous player that's missed a famous penalty in a, in a cup final. And, and this is a really nice way of just setting the scene about why it's important to look at penalties and the psychology of penalties. As I've said here, really important, whatever you're doing, if you're doing research, you must reference. And your introduction should have lots of references in it. As we move forward now through to the middle section, now that we've introduced the topic, we're now going to be looking at some of the theories. So, for example, if I was looking at the psychology of penalties, I'd need to look at what psychological theories help explain why people sometimes choke in a high-pressure situation. So I might need to go to some textbooks and I might need to quote some of the theories and, and again, give the reader an understanding about what's going on. I also, importantly, need to have a look at what has been done before. So I need to go through and cover the previous research that's been done and I need to try and link that to the theory that I've discussed earlier. So what research has already been done on penalties and psychology? Again, if I'm researching, I need to reference. What's really important about the previous research is that we really make sure we've got the detail, level of detail um, that allows the reader to fully understand what's going on. So as you move through your funnel and you get really specific and you find some articles that are really relevant to what you're doing, you need to be asking yourself the questions, what did they investigate? What did the previous researchers find? And be specific. If you want to co copy graphs or quote results from previous articles, that's absolutely fine. Now the end section, right at the end of your introduction, is really where you start to wrap it all together. And this is where you're really looking at the articles that are very, very similar to the ones that you've done. And this is where you might give even more detail about the previous research that's been done. Now what's really important here is that by looking at these similar articles, you're, you're telling the reader where the gap is. So, for example, if you found that there's lots of research that looks at the psychology of penalties in elite players, you may say that the gap is where there is no research on uh, non-elite or amateur players. So, you're really sort of covering all that's been done before and then making clear that there is a gap and that gap is where your project is going to go. Okay, so the end of your introduction finishes with a sentence which states your question. And as it says here, it should just be one sentence question. Okay, so you can literally just finish it as, in conclusion, the question for this project will be...
dot 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 your answer okay your question you then need to state your two hypotheses your two hypotheses are your predictions okay and um, been through before you need two hypotheses you have one hypothesis which says that there will be some sort of effect in your study and then you have a second hypothesis which states there will be no effect and again these should be one sentence each labeled just like they are here okay as the experimental and the null and very simply um, just exactly as they are Okay, so the key points. Um, with an introduction, take time to plan it, take time to work out what you're going to say in each paragraph. So it's really worth doing an essay plan here. Start off broad, start off with some general articles around what you're doing, and then as you move through, review what's been done in other studies, become more and more specific, looking at articles that are more and more relevant to your question, and you should finish by looking at the really relevant articles by exposing your gap, Okay, your selling point, why your study is, is, uh, is going to fit into a gap in our knowledge. And then you finish by stating the research question and hypotheses that you're testing. And that's it.